Hello, I'm Adriana Lack of Zoclo Wellness, and this is the fifth episode of Recharge TV, which is a weekly love letter in the chaos of the times. And today we have Liz Long, one of my favorite people and healers. And we'll hear more from Liz about who she is and what she does. But first, let's just do a little check in, a little meditation, and call in the circle. So, feeling your sits bones on your seat, your feet on the ground. With every breath in and out, just relaxing, letting yourself go. Feeling the floor underneath you, feeling the earth underneath that holding you. With every out breath, letting that holding happen more and more. And with the in breath, feeling the top of your head suspended from the sky and lengthening up, even as you relax down. Feeling yourself suspended and held and resting. And from that place, feeling this circle, these people watching this conversation, inviting in beloved ancestors and guides into this circle, helping us hold this space. and helping us to have whatever conversation needs to be had in this moment for the good of all. Taking a few more breaths, feeling that suspension and that relaxing down, that being held. When you're ready, gently open your eyes and come back to the circle. Liz Long. Hi, friend. We've been pulling a tarot card for each of our conversations. So will you pull one with me? Yes. Awesome. I'm going to shuffle and yeah, asking what it is that we need to talk about today. Mm -hmm. What deck are you using? Are you using the Wild Unknown yeah. deck? Mm -hmm. Such a good one. It's really the only one that I know. I like it a lot. Mm. Why don't you tell me when to stop shuffling? Will you do that? Now. Ooh. All right. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Ah, the fool. The fool. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I love this one. A little chick on a cherry blossom. Mm, so sweet. The first of the major arcana. Let's read it. Okay. The fool. Let's see. I'll try it up. Spontaneity, innocence. The fool is ready to fly. His young wings ache for flight, and with a single step, he leaves behind the comfort of the nest to begin the journey through the major arcana. Is he ready? Will he fall? This is a card about beginnings. It points mm -hmm. to the part of you that is spontaneous, excited, naive, and inexperienced. <laughs> <laughs> Others may doubt your abilities. <laughs> Be ready to be called the fool. Be ready to fall. No matter what people say about you, this is your journey and it's already begun. Mm, I love it. <laughs> I love it for so many reasons because I mean, I think like, I mean, personally, it like speaks to me a lot just because of like what's been going on in the kind of milieu of my world this week and like a lot of fresh energy, like energy that has been stuck as like, 
like moving again for me right now, which has been really intense. There's a lot of crying this week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then also I feel like collectively, that's such a beautiful card because it's like, I don't know, I feel like for so many of us, we're in this time of like, what we've been doing isn't working. We have to try some new stuff. And like, there's so many, there, there's so much like idealism and it's like the kind of idealism that we have to have right now, I think in order to survive. Um, and also we're like, how is this idealism gonna work? How is this gonna play out? And I feel like that idealism feels like part of the fool um, archetype to me because it's like you have these ideas and then you go out into the world and you're gonna see like you know how they really stack up and and what they look like in real time you know what I mean mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean you don't have the ideal it doesn't mean you don't have the like the innocent hope and the aspiration mm -hmm. but that, like you get seasoned you know as you walk out there and you're like this is my idea and people are like I was like, never going to work or, you know, whatever <laughs> happens in the, in the process. Yeah. Yeah. But you're a little chick and you're like, I have to do this. You know, you're like, I can't not explore the world. The, the world is too mm. interesting and too beautiful mm. and too new, right? Like mm. newness is so sweet. I feel like. I love that. And I love like what you said you can't not do it. And I feel like, isn't that such like, you know, when we get like locked into perfectionism, which is like one of those like tenets of like white supremacy, you know, it's like that, um, that like trappedness of like, I can't do anything if I don't do it right. And like, I don't know, I feel like the fool energy is almost like an antidote to that, which is not saying like, be careless, but it's saying like, you can't learn unless you try. Like, yeah, yeah. And nothing's you gonna happen if you just sit there. Exactly. And you can't learn if you're not new to something. Mm. You, can't you can't know all the things and learn at the same time, you know? Yes, damn. <laughs> I love that. It, you may, it's making me think of like the Brene Brown podcast when like somebody says something awesome. She's like, say that again. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can't learn if you're not new. And I don't know, it makes me think about my own, I don't know, my own like reticence to like fail in public and my own reticence to like learn visibly, you know, like how much we often feel like we have to have everything figured out. And so we can't like demonstrate a process. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but like, that's not what it's about. That's not what about what like growing and like collective change is about like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I do love that you brought in Brene Brown because I do, that is one thing <laughs> that I love about her. And I've been so impressed about with her that she grows and changes in public and, mm. um, you know, is like totally willing to, to have that be uh, a scene experience. You know, mm. I think that's pretty rare actually for people with that kind of following. Maybe it's all that vulnerability work. <laughs> well, she says that she's the one who needs it most. <laughs> that's what she, you know, right? I wonder if you feel that way in your work, um, that so many of us get into the work that we do, like helping professions, service oriented work, because we need the thing that we are actually learning to do, right? Which yes. does seem to like also be about the fool. Mm. We, yeah, we, do, we, we have to do it because we, we also need it, you know? Mm -hmm. Part of us knows that. Mm -hmm. um, it makes me think of, I know you like want to move into the introduction. No, no, I can get around. I know. I'm like, no, we have, we already we have some folks watching. Actually, our our, our favorite people, Erica. Erica says, "Yay, my two favorite folks and beginner's mind." So, actually, let me. Isn't that cool? I can put the. Oh, that's exciting! Hi, casing Erica, dive master diva. <laughs> she says hello. 
<laughs> this is a family show. <laughs> it is. Basically just like a bunch of friends hanging out. I don't know. If anybody yeah. <laughs> having conversations that maybe other people could listen to. I don't know. I think it's, I'm, I'm really excited to be talking to you and. Yeah. Likewise. Well, I think that also is, a, is about the fool to me where it's like, mm. yeah, we, we know some things like I went to school a bunch of years and you've been doing this for a while. And, you know, I think it's easy to, to see, uh, <laughs> Erica's still going. <laughs> um, much love, Erica. Yeah, we love you, Erica. It's easy to see that, like, we maybe have some expertise, but we're also just figuring it out, mm. you know, as we go along and sharing what we know with people. So, mm -hmm. um, and that's so what I love about you is that mm. you're always like figuring stuff out. Like, we were, I mean, yeah, we can, you can, t <laughs> you do, you do guide readings, right? And you do Correct. a lot of like spiritual guidance for people. You're also a Reiki master. You do Reiki. Um, stop me if you want to add something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, and you're also still figuring it out. What does it mean to channel disembodied spirits and ancestors, people who have died and aliens? That's <laughs> Anybody who saw my post was like, I was like, and hey, we might talk about aliens. They're like, you're an alien person now. <laughs> I know. This, I wondered, I was like, I need to actually check with Liz first about this. <laughs> I know that it's oh my God. No, I'm so excited to talk about aliens because I never, well, I've told you this. I was never an alien person, like an, a believer. And then I started to channel aliens in my readings. I was like, oh, I guess they're real. That's what I love about it because it came up. I read this really kind of wackadoodle book. It would be wackadoodle to a lot of people. It, like talked about Atlantis and Lemuria <laughs> and places that supposedly don't exist. And it talked about aliens. And I was like, it talked about aliens. And you're like, oh, yeah, I didn't believe in aliens until I channeled one. Like one just showed up. In a healing session, I was like, yeah, this is the most amazing. <laughs> I was so surprised, but it was so undeniable. It was just like he was just like sitting right next to me, so I was like, oh, I guess you're real, huh? You know, <laughs> but like not scary. Um, but yeah, I mean, I feel, yeah, a lot of this work is uh, like figuring it out as I go along, and like. Um, I mean, even the Reiki piece, you know, like that's something that I'm in a, a big process with right now because like Reiki is a Japanese modality. I'm not Japanese and there's been a lot of whitewashing and, you know, of course, like the forces of colonization affect everything and it's affected Reiki. And so I've really been sitting with like yeah, like how do I how do I practice this, and especially how do I teach this in a good way that like that honors um, like honors the peoples from which it came and does not contribute to like erasure and um, yeah, and like that's something that it's like this is already what I do, and you know this has like become like really come to my attention in the past. I mean, I've been like percolating with it for the past few months. And like in the past couple of weeks, I was like, oh, I think I'm ready to teach another Reiki class. And then my body was like, no, like you're not gonna do that yet until like kind of this, you have some clarity around this piece. And so, I mean, I feel like that's another way that like I have to learn in public right now. And actually I'm really excited to share that journey and process with people, especially like the students that I have worked with, because it just feels important. It's like, as we get new information, as we get new awarenesses, like we get to pivot and we get to change and like, we get to show our processes to each other. Um, mm -hmm. And I guess I think about sort of like the antithesis of the fool is mm -hmm. like the, the person and like sometimes me when I'm just like, oh, like I, like I won't allow myself to move until I have all the answers. But it's like, you know, my dad used to say this thing and he said like, you can't steer the boat unless it's in motion. Mm. It's like, 
you can't, uh-huh. we can't, you know, we can't move like we can't steer unless we're already moving. And I think that like just necessitates that we're going to make mistakes, you know, by the very nature of what it means to like move in the world. So mm-hmm. how do we course correct? Um, <laughs> Yeah, like we talk about decolonizing and we talk about, um, you know, burning down, dismantling, this kind of stuff. But what happens as we do that? Like, we kind of have to be the fool, right? Mm. Brand new at everything. And, Mm. you know, aliens are no. (laughs) What I appreciate about that conversation and what I appreciate about the conversation in general it, actually, Shane and I talked about this. It's like maybe you don't believe in that. Maybe you're you think it's a bunch of hooey. But we need to expand our imagination, and those things expand our imagination. Like, what if? What if aliens exist? What if this is true? You know, I think especially with colonization, what we've been conditioned to think is true is like so small. Ah, oh, it's like really a fraction of the <laughs> it's so small yeah. and i'm not saying there isn't great advances in science and and all of all kinds of things but even with more knowledge the container that we have with colonization and with like materialism right the philosophy that like what's real is only what we can feel and sense mm that has made the container for our truth so small. Oh, yes. And, and so how can we be the fool around things that we just cannot conceive of? Like mm. a little blue alien showing up one day, you know? <laughs> and I love that you're just like, well, I guess it's true. You know? I guess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I guess we're learning, you know? And I think that's, I think that's amazing. Like, to me, it's not the point of like, are there aliens or not? It's like, how do we come to new information with that mm. inner's mind, with that full mm. energy of like, mm. yeah, maybe the plants do talk, or maybe we, um, maybe we humans are like incredibly unimportant, or maybe we're the center of the universe, or like, I really don't know. <laughs> Or maybe it's a combination of both and like we can't even conceive of it in this physical body. Yes, the third one. (laughs) (laughs) The third one. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there, huh? Behind the third door. Behind the third door is vastness, inexplicable. (laughs) I feel like, yeah, and that, I mean, to me, that's such like an important. I don't know, like, I don't want to say an important part of my work, but like <laughs> an important part to me of like the the vibe that I hold, which is like, let's like listen to some shit that's not us. Like mm-hmm. what happens when you ask like a friend a question versus what happens when you ask like a rock that same question, <laughs> you know, like what, what happens when, um, what happens when we like allow ourselves to listen to like geological time, Mm. you know, and like what kinds of different perspectives, like, will that bring to us, you know, and it's not that we don't listen to each other, but like, yeah, to me, it feels so, um, I don't know. And, And Shane talked a lot last week about like, well, I remember she said like my family includes like squirrels and trees, (laughs) you know, and, and, like perhaps one of like the many losses of colonization. And, you know, I say this as someone of colonizer lineage who like benefits from these processes and also has lost from these processes. Like Mm -hmm. I think many of us in varying degrees, like, you know, holding parts of, of both of those. And, um, but like the sort of the losses to me feel like, okay, only humans can be your family. Like these are the only voices that you can listen to. Whereas like when, you know, for me, like my people come from like the the British Isles and I know that there were land-based traditions there like many, many years ago. 
and perhaps those traditions included like more communion with land and rocks and trees. So it wasn't seen as some, you know, aberrant thing to go like, oh, I'm gonna like listen to what this tree says about this problem that I have or about this question that I have. And, um, you know, to me, when I remember to plug into those perspectives, like everything really shifts for me because it like things feel so much more like, rich and grounded mm -hmm. and like less urgent because I think we we buy into like a myth of urgency and like we reflect it to each other like even when we're trying not to and so like listening to those land spirits or listening to those aliens or you know whoever is like coming through in a channeled reading I think can like break our um like break our myths of urgency or like unworthiness or whatever like whatever like perspective that we're holding on to that might be crystallized that might only be broken by like listening to like a being that is not like us mm -hmm. Oof, i love that that makes me think of traveling actually mm. <clears throat> you travel to other places that are really different than where you're from if you do it with an open mind and an open heart, like the, the message that I've always gotten, and I've heard so many people say this, is that you realize how different, like different places show up, how different different mm. people show up, how different, how diverse the variety of humanity is. Mm. I think that's true of non-human communication where like, yeah. yeah, if we come in a way that's open, you know, and open and respectful and responsive, you know, then we can under, we can, our minds can be blown, right? You know, mm. and our hearts can be open to a different way. Mm. And that is relationship. And I think that's also where we can understand um, whatever privilege we might have as humans, you know. Mm. Mm. Well, that covers it. So, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So you doing this work, like talking to different beings, how has that changed you? Oh my God. Wow. I love that question. Um, I mean, okay. There's like a few things that I could talk about with that, but I mean, I, I think at first, the first thing that I noticed that I noticed, um, especially when like, you know, when I'm doing a reading or a session for someone and um, I like feel the pull of sort of going into like a, the channel, which feels like, hey, this like really strong current like wants to come through. It's not of my own like knowing or control. Mm -hmm. And so there's like a surrender that happens and um, yeah, like something that, that feels like, okay, like maybe I am not the one in this situation who like knows and I can be a sort of a conduit for knowing. And I feel like that is humbling and also like a kind of a constant like little struggle with my ego because I'm like, well, I have things to say, like I have things that I know and, um, yeah, I don't know. And Adriana and I, we just did a class. We took a class together with Shane and she kind of spoke to that directly. Um, kind of that relationship between like our ego and like this other like way of knowing. And, um, but I do feel like what I've learned in channeling and especially like, you know, the during the time that I've been doing the Transmission Tuesday, which is, <clears throat> I'm not doing it as much anymore, but for a couple of years, I regularly, like every Tuesday, channeled a message, usually from Earth Energies, and shared it on my social media. Um, and I feel like I learned so fucking much from listening to the Earth. Like I learned things I like didn't know at all. And I think it really started with like the first time 
it happened well, the first time I, I intentionally like listened to like a tree. Um, and I was out at Catherine Creek with like my apprenticeship group with Shane and we were taking a break and <clears throat> I went and I like, you know, was like walking around and there was this black oak tree and I was like, oh, that tree is so pretty. Like I want to hang out there and felt sort of like shy about approaching this tree. And I felt this energy was like, come on, like sit right down. And it was like super warm and inviting. And I was like, you know, and I think uh, um, like as someone who is not from this place, um, you know, like, as I said, you know, I'm of colonizer lineage. And so I'm, I'm often thinking about like, you know, how to be in good relationship with the land. And, um, and so I was like, you know, I felt even hesitant to kind of like connect with this tree because I was like, is this, you know, is this the right thing to do? And then they were like, listen, like, let me just tell you like what you're worried about and what it really is, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, they, the tree, you know, talked to me a lot about like, like, what does it mean? To, like, what is the energy of entitlement? And then like, what is the energy of like participation because we're part of a web and like the difference between those two things. And, um, mm -hmm. I just like never knew any of that. And so I feel like, mm -hmm. I feel like being in relationship, like specifically in this way of like channeling the land, like, has helped me understand like what it like what it means to be in family and like to feel loved by like something that's not human and I feel like it's really like rounded out some of the sharp edges of my like ideological like dogma really um and like helped me to understand through my heart um so that was a very, very long answer to your question. So, good. so can you describe the difference between the energy of entitlement and the energy of participation that the tree yeah, um, and I, was talking I, about? Yeah, and I think if I don't, um, if I don't remember everything clearly, it's somewhere on my Instagram. I think I reposted it. So I can put it in my stories um, for people who want to read it, the whole transmission like after this. But um, yeah, maybe we can link to it. Yeah, they, they said, um, and the energy of entitlement is an energy of fear. And it's about taking so much as if you were not a part of this. Mm -hmm. And then the tree said, like, we're a family. So you have to act like it. So you have to act like family with how you take and how you give back. Um, and that actually, <clears throat> when we see ourselves as outside of the family, like that's where entitlement comes in. That's where like extraction comes in. But if we remember that we are a part of, then like there is like inherent balance or there's like a, like a movement towards balance. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. But I just, I remember they said like, you know, stop acting like you're not a part of this. And I was like, oh, because like my sort of fear about like, well, how, how do I be a part of the world? How do I be part of nature in a good way? Is like also acting like I'm not a part of, you know, it's also like holding me apart. And then entitlement is like this other aspect of fear that is, um, that is like also like a separation, but like manifesting, you know, in a different way. Yeah. So it's like, um, yeah, what Robin Kimmerer talks about in braiding sweetgrass. It's like the like the the myth is that we are different than nature. We are separate from yes, nature. and that is actually what causes the problems. Mm. Yep, it's funny. Um, I one of my good friends is like every time I post a transmission, she's like, "Read braiding sweetgrass," and I like have it. And I haven't read it and I'm like, well, if I read this, is she gonna just like say all the things that like I'm channeling? I'll be like, no. Um, You'll just be like, see, Brady Sweetgrass. <laughs> <laughs> Don't read my transmissions, just read Brady Sweetgrass, no. <laughs> it's, but I, I mean, she does say a lot of things. Well, and I think that's like also the thing is like, I mean, 
Okay, that's another thing about this work. It's like, I didn't make this shit up. Like, I don't fucking own these ideas. Like, they don't like, I'm not like gonna be like, here's like my philosophy about like how to be with tree. <laughs> Wait, here's the way to do it. Can you just actually start a transmission in that voice, please? Here's my philosophy of how to be with the tree. Step one you take a leaf, you press it between your palms, and you put it to your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way you can do it. <laughs> There's a rule. <laughs> I love that I make you laugh. It makes me so happy. <laughs> You're the most hilarious spiritual guide that I've ever, <laughs> I've ever met, truly. I'm so glad. No, but I think, like, the thing with... <laughs> Like, okay, my the things that I'm channeling, like, are the things that, that Robin Wall Kimmerer is writing about in Braiding Sweetgrass. And, you know, she wrote that book a while ago. Like, I haven't read it, but it exists. And, like, I mean, I think that's, like, I don't know. It's, like, that sort of, to me, connects to this idea about, like, and this is something, a transmission that I posted last week, but, like, we don't have to, like, like, truth is just, like, available to us. It's, like, a well... It's like a river that is like underneath that, um, you know, that we're all like, we can all tap into at any time and we don't have to be like, I mean, yeah, I think sometimes we do have to um, like put a pin in it to remember the truth because like there's a lot of lies floating around, but like, mm. you know, I mean, I think like the big truths like are just available to anyone, you know, and um yeah, I don't know. I was going somewhere with that. But I think like that's like that's important to note, right? And it's not so much about like and Jeevan and I had a really beautiful conversation about this not too long ago. Our friend Jeevan Singh, who I'm sure viewers know who she is, but if you don't, you know, find her. Um but we were talking about like, oh, you know, when when I say things or when we say things, it's not just like me, but it's like me and my ancestors or me and this like truth that I'm hanging out with. And, you know, I don't need to put like a stamp of ownership on it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's also like how I feel about my work. It's not like, you know, okay, like these beautiful words come through and, and these truths come through, but they don't like belong to me. They're not of me, you know, I'm just like, we are listening, you know, to like the truth that already exists and like transcribing it, you know, or like a reading. It's not like a writing, it's a reading. <laughs> it's a reading of what's already there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I would imagine in a culture that is all about commodification and ownership, that's actually mm. a hard balance to find. Um, and I think that's true in a lot of like spiritual professions or like, um, you know, cause it's both not regulated and also kind of scorned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of room. There's like the assumption, the assumption of quackery and also quackery. <laughs> <laughs> the assumption of quackery and also actually actual quackery quackery yeah yeah I mean that is a whole other discussion which I actually do want to have at some point about yeah. you know business and spiritual service um but what I hear you saying is that there's like it sounds like it hasn't been that hard for you actually to know that this isn't yours is that accurate or is that a constant um, process for you? Yeah. Um, gosh, that's such a good question. Um, no, I mean, I feel like, I feel like I know, I feel like I'm a steward of it. You know, I feel like I'm a steward of the, like the words that come in a transmission, but it feels really different when I share something that I channeled versus when I share something that like I wrote you know, like the way that I feel in my body when I share like a poem that I wrote or if I like, you know, 
some people know that I'm an amateur pole dancer. And like, you know, if I like share a video of myself like dancing, that feels really different than, you know, sharing something channeled. But I do, I do sometimes feel like that like urgency of like, okay, I've got to like say this, I've got to put this out there right now. And it's got to like speak to these things. And, you know, like I want people to receive it in this way or like, you know, I think like, even though I, I feel like aware that like the words and the truths like aren't mine, I still feel like influenced by sort of like the need to like commodify those things mm -hmm. because like I'm <laughs> trying to get by, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and like, um, so yeah, I mean, it's like super weird. Um, yeah. And hard and also like, I don't know, I feel like we're many of us in this, like in that boat together as we like un uh, intentionally like try to like pull apart the threads of like competition and like commodification that like are required in capitalism. And when we are intentionally trying to shift towards something else like, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of us are like aware of that feeling of competition and also being like, and that person like fucking stole my idea or like that per, you know, it's like there all these things like exist, exist at the same time. And mm -hmm. it's weird. It's weird. It's hard. It's true. I listen to, um, I love Jessica Lignano's astrology takes. And she had one that came out today that was about like, so you want to be a witch, basically. Uh -huh. <laughs> And I love how she talked about business and doing healing work and kind of like spiritual work. Um, she said that you have to be in constant contact with your guidance mm -hmm. because it's like a process of like finding that balance between your ethics and your guidance and capitalism. Like this is what mm -hmm. we're working with, like you said. And I hadn't really ever articulated it like that. Mm -hmm. but that part of what you're talking about, which is like being in contact with non-human or disembodied, you know, guidance and help or just other voices, right? In, in the milieu of creation. It's like, yeah, you don't have to figure it out yourself. You know, like it's not, in some ways it's like not the end of the world that we have capitalism the way we have. Mm -hmm. It's a part of the unfolding in the process and um, it's done a lot of harm, but it's also what we're working with. And there's like, maybe there's even some meaning to it. This process of like investigating of mm. with, of like, like we got here somehow. Yes. We're, we're going to get someplace else. Can in this moment we be conscious and discerning and deliberate Mm. about how we mold what happens mm. next, you know mm. and like yeah with the energy of the fool of like we don't really we don't really know people will call us a fool for like doing it how we're doing it mm -hmm. you know? but yeah oh my gosh I have so many thoughts about what you just said I mean, and I also like love kind of what you're describing about what Jessica Lanyado says and also what a lot of people say, which is that we're in, like people say we're in late stage capitalism and that's something that sometimes feels really resonant for me. And, you know, and even in this time that we're in right now in the, the Rona portal, <laughs> like whatever, you know, we want to call it where we're, it's like all of these like, disparate threads you know like things being at the end of their rope like but still being like the reality and how like that's such like a weird like liminal space to exist in but like we have to because this is where we are and like it feels powerful to acknowledge that and and also I really like what you said about like we got here for a, like we're here for a reason we're here because we like put ourselves here and like i mean the we being like people who had power you know like 
Yeah. <laughs> and um, and still like there is like a, a healing process and a learning process that I think like we're engaging in as we make these shifts. And yeah, I feel like that's really important to name um, and not just being like, oh, we just got like dropped here in the middle of the ocean. Like how did this happen? Mm -hmm. You know, but like seeing the trajectory that led us to this place, which is, you know, a trajectory of pain and oppression and disconnect and, you know, so many things. Um, and it's like a trajectory of like human creation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, and right. I like your distinction between like, there's, there's a lot of nuance in who created where we are. Right? Yes. And depending on what you believe about the human soul and whether or not we've like <laughs> been here before, I mean, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, even if we had no agency in being here now, you know, in these bodies, we do have agency about where we go, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, you know, and if we're talking about like privilege and oppression, it's like, we always, we have this thing called free will, right. you know, like we have this thing, we have this ability to engage or not and how we engage. And um, I do believe in this, in this particular discussion of like capitalism and basically like how we, because I think when we talk about capitalism, we're talking about like how, how do we relate to ourselves and especially the earth? Mm. Like, how do we relate to our resources? And yeah, we do get to decide if we relate more and more into like commodification and disconnection or mm. relationship, you mm. know? Mm -hmm. um, and that does have something to do with privilege, but also like that is also everybody's choice. Yes. So, I mean, mm. we ice cube and align with the Trump campaign. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yep. We still have choice. Yep. So, um, mm. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's a deep, it's a deep well. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was just a deep pit. <laughs> deep maybe, muddy pit. <laughs> maybe that's, um, I don't know if you've announced to, to your viewers yet that you were considering having like a, a reunion panel with like everyone who's been on your show. Like, how we just did. We just yeah. Did. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a consideration. We'll anyway, that, no. but maybe that no, would, uh, maybe that would be, maybe that's a topic that yeah. can be dove dived. Dove dive, Divin. Divin. <laughs> <laughs> and we're done. Okay. And, Good night, everybody. <laughs> and aliens, though. <laughs> no, I do think that's something we could all talk about. Um, because I think it's something a lot of people are talking about. And I, I actually do think being a small business owner is one of the best ways I can think of to still be in the matrix and not be of the matrix. Mm. Um, yeah. Oh, it's hard. Of, yeah, it is hard. Yeah. If you're not like off the grid living out the land. I don't know. I don't, right. I don't actually know. Yeah. I don't actually know. But, I don't know either. And I think there's beauty in the not knowing. And maybe that's also the fool. Like, we yeah. get to say when we don't fucking know. And I feel yeah. like those are the moments when we can invite like wisdom that's not of us. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. I think that that, to me, that is a touchstone that offer, like actually offers me a lot of solace mm. to ask like Shane said, like you walk out your door and be like, 
who wants to talk? <laughs> you know, like who, you know, who wants to chat and share, you know, not not everyone's gonna want to talk, but um but that is also the web, you know. Mm. So the more we can do that, the more we can remember that it's not just about us and our egos. Mm. It's not just about humans. Um, mm. I think the more that we can sit with these unanswerable questions and the more the path will be revealed. Mm. That makes me think about um, <clears throat> this time when I was like, I don't know, 18 or 19, not very political yet. And I remember seeing like this bumper sticker that said, not every problem has an American solution. Mm. And I like didn't really understand what it meant. And then of course I like began to understand as the years went on. But you know what you just said made me think like, maybe not every problem has a human solution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's part of it. That's mm -hmm. maybe most of it. Yeah. 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 Ooh. I kind of want to leave it there. Okay. Is there anything else that's coming through that you... I don't know. I mean, I guess like aliens... Should we go back to aliens? I don't know if we we're going to talk more about aliens. Um, I guess it's interesting to me because I've talked to some aliens that like I got really mad at and irritated with, and I didn't think that they were right about what they were saying. And I know that you had a similar experience when you're reading a book that was like supposedly like someone who channeled aliens. Mm. And um, I don't know, it just makes me think about like autonomy mm. and like asking for guidance, not asking for permission, like mm -hmm. that we, you know, part of like, part of us being a part of it does not mean like, I mean, I think it's like so important, right, to surrender and be like, I don't fucking know and ask for help. And then also to be like, and I do know some things, like I'm not like a... I'm not an empty vessel and to not like, I mean, I had a really great conversation with uh, my friend Megan um, the other day, Megan Hawkins, who is an incredible tarot reader and like animist and amazing person. And I was talking to her about like, well, my guides like told me to teach this class, but then when I went to go do it, it felt super wrong. And she really brought up like, mm. okay, you live in this world, like guides are over here. Like, you're going to bring a piece of the puzzle, you know? And it's like, so I guess I think also about like discernment and like listening and receiving guidance, but also like remembering that like we are a part of it also. And we don't like, just like we don't hand away our power to like other people who might have an idea of like what we should do. Mm -hmm. Like we don't do that to like, anybody you know we like receive guidance but we receive it as like full and whole people like that are empowered and able to discern um and so i don't know i feel like that's an important piece like when we're talking about like listening to spirits and especially with aliens because like i don't really trust them i mean they're just like other <laughs> awesome like I'm not like distrustful, but I'm not gonna be like, oh yeah, you're like my spirit guide. Like I don't think aliens are spirit guides. I think they're like energies with other perspectives, which is awesome. But like, I don't know if they have my like highest like interests. Like they might have their own shit going on. Like I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah. Do you think <laughs> that like setting the stage with a uh even the intention of I'm looking for information or relationship that is in, you know, in my highest good for this moment. Right. Cause that's the other thing is like, yeah, we can get the same advice in one moment as another moment in our lives. And it's very different. Mm. It's like lands very differently. Yes. Um, 
Yeah. So is there a, is part of it like setting the intention or setting like the stage for? I think so. Yeah. Like setting your compass towards like truth and yeah, so you're to set your compass for where you want to go. And yeah, um, we receive. Yeah. So I think that that is, um, that is really important like that intention and you know the times I've channeled aliens like the first time it was really amazing because it was like for another person that I was working with and like the the information that came through was like specific for them and their healing and it was beautiful the second time it happened like they just, the aliens just like talked to me and I was outside and I was like man like kind of fuck you <laughs> like <laughs> so I wasn't like asking, I, I think I was more like in conversation and I wasn't like, tell me what I need for my healing. But I was like, I want to know about this. And then they came and I was like, mm, I don't know. Like, <laughs> like the cosmic version of mansplaining. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Like they were really, they're kind of condescending. And I was like, you don't understand what it's like to be. A human. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that when we do that work for ourselves, like, and we, we do that work for other people, like really tuning into that, like heart intention of what is the highest and best for me or for this person at this time. And, um, I think that that's really powerful and important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, I remember my guides were like, I don't know giving me some information about like a healing process I was going through and their timeline was so intense. And yeah, I remember getting permission to be like, yeah, I need, I need y'all to slow down and back off. Mm -hmm. I do think, yeah, I love you bringing in that aspect of like self-determination. Mm -hmm. it, it does feel like a balance, like an exploration mm -hmm. of, you know, kind of, of like right sizedness. You yes. Know? It's like, yes. I am, again, neither the center of the universe nor an insignificant part. Like, I am mm -hmm. a co creative mm. entity with all these other entities. Mm. I both have my own agency and also mm. recognize the agency of others. Mm. Um, yeah. Like, dissolving that, that binary. I love that. Yeah. Mm, full circle. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. that comes back to, you know, what we were talking about, about choice and about like, like being a part of this, you know, like being a part of the web. We're not outside of it. And that means that like our wants and perspectives matter alongside of so many other wants and perspectives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. I love that. That's how you come to the work and just come to your life. Mm. You know, like when you talk about um, having colonialist lineage and, and all of that and figuring out how to be in the world with that reality. Um, it's like, I really, I just love how you talk about that with um, investigating mm. with agency, right? Mm with like right sizeness. Mm. So I think whatever, whatever we're dealing with, whatever our life circumstances are, that, that is a big question. And depending on our life circumstances, that looks different ways, right? There's a different makeup of, of that process. Um, so I love, I love you bringing that in. Mm, thanks for saying those words. And I love, it's funny because the concept, of being right sized to me, like I first heard that and like the rooms of 12 step programs, which is like a whole other conversation. Um, but like a big part of like my own spiritual growth. And, um, but yeah, I feel like that's such a beautiful, like I'm going to walk away from this conversation, like remembering that nugget today of mm. right sizedness. Um, cause it feels really important right now. Mm. Yeah, it does. Yeah, but like, let's not be afraid to begin, you know? Yes. Yeah. 
Oh, oh Liz Long, thank you so yeah. much. Thank you. Yeah. This was so fun. Likewise, and I'll see you on the reunion at the reunion tour. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. I can't wait for the conversations yeah. to be had. Yeah. Well, let's settle into our bodies again and, and give thanks for this circle. So just taking a few breaths, feeling that suspension and that resting. And just thanking the ancestors and guides, whoever was here, uh, <laughs> helping us hold this space, perhaps also some aliens. We give thanks to you as well um, for helping us have this beautiful conversation. Thank you to all who are here and watching. And um, yeah, subscribe for the latest. <laughs> Leave us a love note in the comments. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Thank you, everybody. Bye.